So the first time I remember seeing them, uh, they were playing with Robbie Gill in New York City at Rockwood Music Hall. <laughs> Rockwood Music Hall. What Rockwood is what we used to call it back in the day. Yeah, there were some unforgettable times, man, you know. Oh, the parties were outrageous. We couldn't even get to the stage. We had strippers, we had baby elephants walking around. Baby elephants! They were like, they were chocolate fountains. So like, right before I was getting on stage, uh, I'd just be able to take some fresh fruit and dip it in the chocolate fountain and i have chocolate pour all over my strings. It was delicious. It was fun. But it was decadent. You see, it played so terribly after that. Well, as a backing band, they were amazing. And they were incredible. Incredible. Uh, we started out playing in the small clubs that were dotted all over the East Village. And they, they were behind me. I was the star then. <laughs> we, uh, we found ourselves very busy as um, sidemen and a backing band, and we decided, you know, why not write our own material, do a bit of the singing, do a bit of the, you know, the skiddly whittly and the, and the flip flu. And, uh, so there we were up at Greg's house. And I had a home studio uh, in Westchester, New York, which I believe is still there. It's a rather organic process. Uh, basically, every once in a while we, we'd block out two or three days, every month or two, and go up and have what turned out to be kind of a, a band camp. To have all of us there for days at a time was a really wonderful experience. Uh, we were sort of all in one room together, just recording live, playing music as a unit, which wasn't how records were made in those days, and even less how they're made now. I, I don't even remember the last time uh, I saw another person. And yet I sit here and I make hit records every day. It came about as a song that Greg had written, uh, brought it in, really the first thing we ever worked on. You know, a very driving quarter note groove that just that that couldn't that couldn't find its home anywhere else. We we added a bridge and some little transitions, and it really uh, it became our our battle cry. My favorite part though is the bridge and the harmony vocals. I think. That's yeah. Really like why don't Why don't we play a little bit of that? Yeah, let's for, check that out for everybody. a second. So. I'm going to solo just the vocals for a second, which obviously we're capable of doing. Here it comes. Everybody's hurting, don't you know? Mm. There it is, there's that blend. It's you a know. great blend. Listening to a lot of, I'll be perfectly honest, I was listening to a lot of Michael McDonald at the time. I think they know where I'm going. Running too long, wow, yeah, you know, I, uh, that's a really singular moment uh, in uh, probably, you know, I want to say on that record, but probably in the history of music. Yeah, let's go right to the bridge because uh, it goes to a different key and Martin Revis comes oh, Martin. in to play. Good old Martin. Here, here it comes. This is just one of my favorite moments. The oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. I'm making honest man of you. Incredible. If it's the last thing I ever do. Now don't you have no fear? How do you think that I got here? The, the combination of the bass part and Martin's vocal together mm. makes for such a special thing. Let's listen to them together for a second. Just because how cool it is. Here it comes. Oh yeah. It's almost like they're talking to each other. It's east meets west, heaven meets hell, highs meeting lows, Brahma meeting Vishnu and Shiva. 
Adam meeting Eve in the garden and doing what they did. Pat had just gotten back, uh, if I recall, from a stint playing with the uh, the, uh, the J-Mo jazz band and he was very influenced by uh, Dr. John and a lot of that music that was coming out of the South and just played a tremendous, uh, tremendous piano solo. A lot of ways, uh, a lot of ways to open a great rock and roll album. So we were sitting down to write and I had nothing. So you get the idea. Of course, uh, there's the, the story of, of what happened to Patrick Firth. I remember waiting with anticipation. And Pat's gone. It comes and it goes and uncovers much pain.